Okay, let's have a look at uh, project management within Bitrix 24. Okay, let's have a look at Bitrix 24 project management. If we go into our workgroup links on the left hand side, we can open up the slider that shows us our existing project groups and we can create a new group by clicking on the add sign. We've got options here to create either an open group that anybody can join, a private group that uh, members can only access by invitation and an external group that uh, is private but is available by invite to external users. So those are your customers and suppliers. So we can do a work group, one of those three options. We can also do those three options as a project. Main difference between a work group and a project is that a project has a start and an end date. Uh, a work group might be for a particular department within a company. A project would be for delivering something that uh, you need to for a customer that has, as I say, a start date and potentially a deadline date as well. So we we want to create a an extranet work group. We can give this a project name. We can add a description. We can add some uh, start dates, as we said, and end dates. I need to add a project owner, and we can also add some moderators to the project and then we can invite in the rest of the team these different levels of ac of access or ownership or membership of the group have different permissions in terms of what they can create and what they can remove from the group we can also add in external users as we've chosen an external group we can we have one already set up here you can invite external users in by email Need to add a group into a subject and we have some more settings here that allow us to enable or disable specific features of the group. So let's create the project group and it, we can see straight away we're into the tasks page, the home page of this project group. I'm actually going to go into a uh, an existing group which has a little bit more content in to talk you through the different features of the group. So inside the homepage of this group, BizTech Project, we can see various tasks that we have uh, to do. Each uh, tasks have different stages and we can progress these tasks through these stages by dragging them across like this. Um, we have a few different ways of viewing tasks within a project group. We're on the planner at the moment. So this is uh, my own particular plan for delivering these tasks. Uh, if I move a, move a task um, across the columns, these will only be reflected in my own view. If I look into the Kanban, it looks similar. Um, the stages are different. But in this case, if I move a task through a different stage, then this, this view will be reflected by all other uh, all other members of the group. We can view tasks as a list view. Uh, within a list view, as we can with the planner and Kanban, we can use the filter at the top. So it might be actually I just want to filter out by my own task. I'm logged in as John Smith. I can use that filter item. I can then start to type to search out the individual task uh, or tasks that I'm looking for. So this is a multi-feature, multi-filter feature at the top. Let's take those filters out and expand this search. We can also choose the columns that we display here. If I go into the settings, you can see the ones we've got um, selected here. Probably not going to need those. We might want modified on or created on. So we can change the columns we have in view. Any changes I make here are only reflect, reflected for myself. And this is all drag and drop so we can create, uh, customize the layout fully. Can view tasks as uh, a Gantt chart as well. So in this case, we can see if we have deadlines, we can see clearly which tasks are over, overdue. We can see which ones are approaching the deadlines. 
if I have permission, I can move these deadlines on this Gantt chart view. Um, the ones that have a thin blue line in the middle mean that the task has actually been started. And we can select or, 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 or access any of the tasks by clicking in the link on the left-hand side. Task will slide in like this. Uh, I can see a bit of content about the task. I can see all the key dates on the right-hand side. I can see the members of the task, including down here, this extranet user, this external user. And we can add our comments and replies to uh, the activity of the task in the comments section. We can record time on tasks, uh, so I can clock into this task. I'm now recording in in real time my time spent on this task. We can add blocks of time as well if that's if that's preferable, and we can view a full history, a change history of this task. So every single action where every user accesses accesses the task is recorded. So those are tasks. Um, you can perform automation on tasks. Just click into configuration. So based on these stages, we can trigger some automatic actions. So when we get to in progress, we're sending an email to the client. When we get to in review, if a user's changed the task to in review, it goes to a uh, the responsible person of the task is changed. And when we get to urgent, in this case, we're posting a message into the activity stream. Um, the actions we've got are here. Generate a new task, delete the task, change the stage, change the status, change the responsible person, et cetera, et cetera. We can also use triggers. So instead of updating the stage manually, we can use a trigger, uh, an external trigger to update the stage. This is quite a good example. So uh, also this is quite a good example. So if the task actually passes the deadline date, we're using a trigger called overdue. That's going to change the, the, the stage of this task, of this urgent column. That's tasks. If we go into the general, then general page is an activity stream. This will show you all the comments and posts and updates for the project. We can uh, add our own replies to these comments here. We can, of course, create our own post in here. I can share images. I can record a video. We can tag people into this. We can do a few other things like create a task from here. We can create a poll, get feedback on multiple choice questions. We can share files. So files can be uploaded from your local machine, from the Bitrix drive, from one of these external drives as well that we integrate with. A couple of other things we can do, show appreciation. So I can search for somebody in here, choose to assign a particular badge and post my message. So when I post a message into this activity stream, in this instance, it by default posts the message to the whole group. And we can see that we're tagging this person in. I can actually add additional people into this and they don't have to be members of this group to receive this uh, notification. So that is appreciation. We kind of make announcements as well. Announcements are a little bit different. They stick in the top right-hand corner of the homepage as a post-it note for a period of time. So most messages that you post in the activity stream will move down the active activity stream as and when other messages appear on top of them. That's of course you pin them to the top um, or save them as favorites. You can um, of course find messages though using the filter um, box at, at the top of the page. We have a calendar. Each project group has its own calendar. I can view this on a daily, weekly or monthly or schedule view. Um, calendars can be integrated with uh, Apple or Android, Android calendars. They can be integrated with um, Outlook and Google calendars. So you can create your events in one of those calendars that will reflect inside Bitrix. 
Each project group has its own drive space. This is where we can store documents that maybe you want to share with your client if you're inviting them in. Some things we can actually search for uh, documents using the search box at the top. And um, it will search for not only the title of the document, but the content of the document as well. Uh, a few things you can do with documents inside Bittrex. Um, of course, we can set access permissions. We can get a shareable link. Uh, if you want to put a, uh, an expiry and a password on that, you can. That would allow you to share that document with somebody outside of the group or even outside of your organization. You do get a revision history. So we just have one here, but if you've if the document's been revised, you've got the option to download or restore an older version of the document. And we can run business processes. So typical process you might want to run is asking for approval from your immediate line manager and then maybe department head. Um, this way we can select the people that we need to approve this and trigger that process. Um, can can build into the process that the document is not live and accessible to other users until it's been approved by those, those two people. Each project group has a chat uh, window. So automatically I'm chatting with all members of the group. Um, we can have instant message chats. We can uh, share files within this. We can have a video call and a voice call as well to these users. Conversations uh, allows you to create one-to-one -one messages to other members of the group. And lists, finally, uh, can be very useful for controlling things like or tracking things like expenses or inventory or costs. Let's click into expenses. So it might be that you would keep this sort of information on a table in a in a spreadsheet. In Bitrix, you can create those tables as a list. Uh, it does allow me to filter by, let's say, consultant in this case, and then further filter by using keywords to find the particular item that we need. So you can you can quickly drill down on into the in the into the data and find the information you need. In addition to that, you can run business processes on lists. So in this example on expenses, it might be that I want to run a process to request that this item's approved for payment. Other list items we've got in here as examples or inventory. It might be you want to keep a stock of products that are associated with this project, or just keep a keep a list of costs associated with the project. So that's the view from your internal user's point of view. We just switch into an extranet user's um, perspective. We're now logged in as this user up here who's an, who's an extranet user. You can see, first of all, that they get access to a lot less in terms of links on the left-hand side. Essentially, all they can access is, is other features within the group. In this case, we're on a self-hosted version, so we've given them access to a support page, a help desk page, and we've got a custom page here that they get access to. But they do get access to all the features of the project group. So as we saw, tasks and general, calendars, drive, chat, conversations, and lists. Um, you can configure permissions to restrict access to some of these items within these modules, but essentially they get access to all of them. They can access tasks if they've got permissions, and they can add their own comments to, to these tasks. So a way to allow you to share, um, share the status of the project with the client and allow them to collaborate with you on that, on that project. Let's just switch back into the other user. Let's have a look at how you can run some uh, reporting on tasks of a project into the tasks page here. Uh, within the tasks page, I can see the projects and the tasks that sit within the projects. This is the project we were in before, so I can see the list of tasks on this page. You can clearly see which ones are overdue. Uh, I can jump in to start recording time on a particular task from this page as well. Again, this is 
the grid view, which allows me to customize the columns and also use the filter at the top um, to find the particular tasks that we're, we're interested in. Can access the task from here. We can open up from this uh, main task page any of the tasks. And we can run a few reports or access a few reports from this page. So we have an involvement um, page, which allows us to see, based on the departments and users, who's working on which tasks. We have a projects page or dashboard, which allows us to see uh, uh, by individual project, the performance metric, which we have basically this is number of tasks completed on time. Uh, it'll give us a score here. We can see start dates and end dates. Uh, again, this is a grid view, so we can choose to disable some of these columns and can customize the layout of this. And we can use the filter at the top to find the information that, that we need. If we go to reports, then it is possible within task reports to generate a custom report. Um, and so within here, I can see all my tasks across the bottom, estimated time required at the, at the left hand side as a table and then line by line underneath uh, in the chart underneath. So that's uh, project management. We looked at creating a work group, the features of a work group, um, how you can invite a client in to that work group and what it looks like from the client's perspective. And then some of the tools that we have to allow you to track and report on projects.